Just what is an automation front end? How do you make processes that you've handcrafted available for others to use in a foolproof type manner? Today we're going to see how Rundeck addresses these issues and more. This is the start of our in-depth, hands-on experience with the Rundeck software. So it's no shock that people who tend to work in tech have their own personal collection of scripts and automation that make their jobs easier. What's becoming more and more prevalent though is that automation can be applied to really any aspect of all different types of organizations. Consider this. Could you be the hero of the office if you were to be able to gather together everyone's Excel macros together and, and put them in a website uh, to be executed on, on any type of spreadsheet? What if you gave HR the ability to run reports on timesheets with just the click of a button? Or how about just a good old-fashioned restart of an application on a server so someone else can do it while you're on vacation? So what can Rundeck do to allow you to share this magic with others? Uh, and, and how does it do that? Well, today we're going to take an introductory look at how Rundeck itself is set up and how you can get started with it. So if you're still with me, we're going to walk through what that looks like in a browser. So when we first log into Rundeck, we're going to get a start page like this. Uh, it does have all of the links to relevant resources, uh, as well as the thing you're most likely going to be clicking on, which is starting a new project. The first thing you're going to want to fill in is your project name, uh, which does not take any spaces, uh, and then the label, what the actual human readable name of your project is going to be, and the description of that project. Uh, there are other settings that we can enable uh, across the top here, uh, but we will be skipping those for the time being. Um, on the left hand side of here is everything that comes with the project, including some of the project settings. We can see that the edit configuration in the project settings that we're going to go over is the exact same screen that we just filled out. When we go to edit the nodes, uh, we're going to see here that we do have the local server uh, as a node to run any of our automation on. To create something meaningful, let's go ahead and create a readme. Uh, so in the project configuration, we can actually enable that readme. And in user interface, where we skipped over before, we can choose to display the readme and the message of the day. Uh, and the message of the day is very similar to the readme, uh, but it's something else that can be filled out and customized based on the day. So what that allows us to do is when we're looking at our dashboard, we can see the, the message of the day, what day it is, uh, and a, a head headline uh, that, that gives us a heads up on, on what's going on with the project. Um, as well, here is the readme. Uh, and we can see that what I put in uh, Markdown, uh, which I put a hash before this, uh, so that indicated a header, which, uh, which reads my project, and then uh, the text that I put below this. To export our projects, and really this is to save projects, we would export all of this uh, using the export archive tool, uh, which would simply prompt for a download. And then we are able to download that file. Lastly, if we are all done with this project, we can go ahead and delete it down here. And that will clean it up. And we are back to our clean instance of Rundeck with nothing else configured. With this foundation out of the way, now we're going to be able to dive deeper and deeper into Rundeck in some of our upcoming videos. If you found that Rundeck has made automation approachable for you, or if you have any questions about it, visit us at rcompose.com. And if you're ready to get started with Rundeck, you can also sign up for a free trial of your own rcompose instance today at rcompose.com.